Hello, this is Breuer, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play series for Crusader Kings 3. Uh, I've been wanting to get back into some Paradox games for quite some time, actually. Uh, and this game actually comes at the request of one of the channel members, uh, someone by the name of Nick Lasses. Nick Lasses? Something like that. Um, <laughs> apologize if I mispronounce your name. Uh, but that is the person who requested that I play Crusader Kings 3. And I, like I said, I've been wanting to play it anyway. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and try it out. And uh, let's get right into it. All right, here we are in game. I'm not going to be having my camera turned on for... Uh, this playthrough just because I was having trouble finding anywhere to, on the screen that didn't have information on it. So there was information everywhere on the screen um, in all corners and all sides. So I was like, you know what? Let's not overthink it. Let's just turn the camera off and it's all, all is well with that. Uh, so here is uh, here's the front screen. This is this is who we're, we're going to choose who we're going to play as. You guys already know who we're going to play as because you saw the, the thumbnail most likely. But... I've been looking at this. I've been kind of going back and forth between 867 and 1066, kind of just seeing which time period I might want to start with. Uh, it, it starts off at 1066. That's like when you load right into the game the very first time, this is where it starts off, as well as the fact that when you start and play the tutorial, it starts you up here with Petty King Merchad here, or Merchad, Merchad, we'll say Merchad, uh, which is an easy Duke of Munster up here. This is, this is known as Newbie Island. Uh, if for anybody that is uh, familiar with any of the Paradox games, uh, typically either this game or I think even EU4, uh, sorry, yeah, EU4 would also qualify as uh, as Ireland as kind of a uh, a newbie place to start. I'm not sure about uh, Victoria 3. I wonder if it if it, there's a newbie spot there for that one as well. I think Canada is probably the newbie spot for Cru for Victoria 3 from based on what I've seen. But anyway, so I think we're going to be playing as... Ireland. This is my first time playing as Crusader Kings 3. I've played Crusader Kings 2 a few times, but again, I've never played Crusader Kings 3. So we're going to jump in here. Uh, I'm not going to go through the tutorial again, although I might do some of the same actions that we saw, that I saw in the tutorial. Uh, as far as DLC, I do have all the DLC currently installed except for uh, Friends and Foes. I went to look at it. Uh, there was a lot of negative reviews about Friends and Foes, not just because it costs money. There's always negative reviews on DLC because it costs money, which I think is personally kind of silly. I mean, if you don't want to pay for it, don't pay for it. <laughs> I mean, it's not nobody's mill. Nobody's making anybody pay for anything. Um, I personally do not mind supporting uh, programmers because I'm a programmer as well. Uh, so I, I'm 100% in favor of paying for DLC personally. But as long as I like it, as long as it's something I want. There's sometimes I'll see DLC that I don't want. And guess what? I don't pay for it. Um, so in this case, uh, there were some negative comments, not related to the payment, but more related to the kind of the content and how it works that I was like, you know what? That doesn't sound like as much fun as I would hope. Uh, it's only five bucks, but I was like, you know what? Let's just leave that one off. I have all the other ones though. I've got the Fate of Iberia, the Northern Lords, uh, the, the fashion and garments of the uh, Abbasid Court and the Holy Roman Empire, uh, as well as the Royal Court uh, expansion uh, as on here as well. So we're going to be playing with all those turned on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and try Iron Mode, Iron Man Mode. Hopefully we don't run into any, any save issues. Uh, normal game difficulty, nothing's changing there. All the game rules are standard by default. Rags to Riches, 15th of September, 1066. Petty King Merchad, 39 years of age. Duke of Munster, uh, he's Irish, obviously. Uh, his son is Brian, uh, who is his only heir, I believe. And we'll go ahead and get right into this. Sure. And like I said, there's, there's a couple of my time, my attempts at, uh, um, what am I going to say? Uh, uh, the tutorial. I think a tutorial I tried like probably a year or so ago, whenever this game first came out. And then one that I just did a few minutes ago, just to make sure I was back up to speed and there was nothing new and crazy here that I was not familiar with. Uh, but here we go. Crusader Kings 3. I mean, obviously if you play Crusader Kings 2, you probably have a pretty good understanding of how this game's going to play out. A few maybe changes, a few polish elements, things like that. But for the most part, it's going to be relatively the same. Sorry, I had to sneeze. Um, which you guys can't see on camera anymore. Uh, usually I hit the mute button and I'm sneezing and you guys can at least see that that's what I'm doing. But without my camera, you guys won't be able to see that. So here's our little, little uh, I don't know, not really empire, I guess, now at this stage. Our little uh, petty kingdom here, which I believe is a... Uh, what is a petty kingdom the same? It's a duchy rank? Okay, so yeah, duchy. So we are a duke, effectively. Uh, we want to become the king of all uh ireland i suppose and maybe even the whole british isles and uh maybe all of uh 
the world. I don't know. Just kidding. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see where it goes from there. Uh, but here we are. Uh, we are the actual ruler of... Um, th we actually have land holdings, or I should say, what I'm saying, land holdings. We have the uh, titles for these two right here, the Tommond and Ennis, I believe. Uh, we do not have Ormond. That is our vassal currently. And uh, we can go check some of that stuff out. Uh, let's see, check out the realm, I suppose. So here's us. Uh, Luminec is our castle. We've got a castle in Ennis. And then we have a vassal over here, again, in Ormond, who currently doesn't like us that much. So something we might want to resolve at some point. Here is our one and only player heir, I believe. In fact, we can go through, look at that through. Where is that? Is that under here? Here it is. I believe. Uh, no, is that where is that? Sorry, you're gonna have to bear with me, by the way. I'm gonna have to. Okay, here we go, children. So we've only got the one child down here, um, which is Brian McMurchad. Murchad? Brian? Brian? I, we're gonna say Brian as well. Brian, Brian. This is Brian, Brian. Because <laughs> I don't know how to say that last name. Uh, that is our one and only heir. Uh, I do have two siblings, apparently. Uh, I have a half sister who is no longer with us. Uh, I have a half brother and a knight, and another half brother over here as well. Uh, looks like my parents are all dead. My grandparents are dead. I guess the only parent that's got listed here is my father. So apparently I came from no mother. Go figure. Um, and then, of course, here's all the different little bits and bobs. Bear with me again as I'm trying to familiarize myself, familiarize myself a little bit with some of the, the things here. Here's our military strength, 1125. Not too bad. We can check out our military over here. We've got our levies. We've got our knights. Knights, I feel like, are relatively new because I don't think we had knights quite in the same. If we did, it wasn't managed this way in Crusader Kings. Uh, these kind of almost seem like they're going to operate like almost like some of the generals did maybe to some degree, although because because they obviously each have their own little uh, skills and stuff like that. But I don't think that's going to be I'm sure there's also generals as well. Quite frankly, I'm sure there's probably generals exist and then these exist as a as a side item. So something that I'm going to have to get familiar with is how these knights work. In fact, we apparently can invite knights to join us. So that's pretty cool. We're already, already at six of six, so nothing's going to change there. Uh, we have mangonels, which are our siege equipment. We have a few light footmen. Uh, these are called men-at-arms. These are kind of more your standard military um, versus the levies, which are kind of your peasantry uh, that come summoned up and stuff like that. So that is the state of things. We can also create more regiments if we wanted to, which we are not going to do at this point in time. Uh, but yeah, decent-sized military, honestly, all things considered. Um which plays into one of the things that they first make you do in the tutorial, which is take out this county down here. Because if we go check out our, uh, here, we can see that the highlighted area here, the little dotted line area, is what we should be able to own based on our current title as the, uh, the duchy title here, the, the petty king of Munster. Uh, Munster would technically be all of this. And so if we wanted to go after this stuff down here, we have a claim on that uh, currently. So... That is something that we might be looking into. We can also check that out here as well with the uh, the duchy uh, title thing. There's the kingdom, obviously, of Ireland. Um, there's the empire of Britannia, which maybe we'll get to that at some point. And back down to our realms. Uh, a couple of the first things that may make us do in the tutorial, which I'm going to go ahead and do here. Uh, you can even see it up here, is that I am unmarried as well as my heir is unmarried. If you've never played a paradox game, one of the easiest ways to get into a paradox game is just take your time and pay attention to the little icons just follow the icons do what they say um we've got a little bit of a advice about the encyclopedia cool we'll check that out if we need to no lifestyle chosen uh lifestyles is not necessarily new uh, there was a def there's a definitely a uh i think it was like a focus or something like that in crusader kings 2 um but there was like a an element similar to this although this is a definitely much a level deeper than anything we saw in crusader, crusader kings 2 because within each of these we have almost like talent trees right based on what we want to kind of go down and what we want to use. It's interesting, the uh, tutorial one has the overseer dots all filled in, whereas this one seems to have the strategist one filled in, which truth be told, I feel like if I'm going to play this kind of as, as I would play, uh, I feel like strategist actually probably is what I would focus on. So I'm going to go ahead and select strategy as a focus. I think technically we can select strategy as a focus and then spend points in any of these. I think that's how it's going to work out uh, because we just get these XP points. Martial experience, 32 a month. Uh, we do get extra bonus points because we have high martial as a leader. Uh, we can go check that out real quick as well. Our leader is 5, 28, 7, and 5. So 20 is obviously by far 
our biggest stat here, which does increase the size of our levies, uh, increases our reinforcement rate, and I believe... I was going to say, here it is. Oh, it's, okay, that, that wasn't what increases our experience. It's this up here, the skill tactician education trait, uh, which is contributing to our high martial, but this is what's giving us 30% extra martial lifestyle experience, which is why I went into that uh, as well. We're also a holy warrior, uh, faith hostility advantage. Interesting. We're currently impatient, wrathful, and temperate. So we're pretty easygoing, unless you make us mad, which will clap you very quickly, or something like that. So that's kind of interesting as well. Um... So the next thing on our list here is to marry off our heir. Actually, before we marry off our heir, I'm going to marry off myself. I feel like I'd rather take the the, the pick here. Uh, one thing we will do, um, this is something that you might have seen in Crusader Kings 2 as well, is that it's very, very good to go after tr specific traits, uh, specifically traits that can be inheritable, um, that you can pass down through your, uh, you know, through your genetic <laughs> makeup, I guess. Um, so we have things like Robust here. Um, we have, which gives us a strong physique. We have Quake here, which helps us become uh, intelligent and things of that nature. So if both the mo mother and the father are in Quick, for example, you have a higher rate. And this is something they told us in the tutorial. You have a higher chance of passing on intelligence to your offspring. So um, I think I'm going to pick one of these that has a potential alliance. Uh, can we see where this is? So this is over here in England. What about this one? That one's way a ways. I don't know if an alliance over here would be super useful. This one is down here. And that's about the only one I'm saying. Honestly, I feel like the one here between England. I mean, strong could be a decent trait for us to pick up. Uh, health is good. Uh, or cynical currently. Forgiving, though. Uh, her traits aren't great, although she has good intrigue. And honestly, having your spouse, if you can keep her happy, having good intrigue can usually be a pretty good way to save your rear end <laughs> a bit, you know? Um, so honestly, I think we might go with her. And get this alliance here because you never know when this could play into something down the road uh sometimes you can marry somebody have a child and that be the only offspring that can actually inherit and eventually you can actually gain more lands into your territory um from your children uh than you would have started with so i think we're gonna go with this she's robust i mean she's what 30 what is her age 33 and we're 39 honestly that's not that bad i think we'll go with this uh looks like they will accept Go ahead and send that proposal off, get us married, and then we're going to also marry off our son. Um, find a spouse. So, same thing. We want to kind of keep this. It's still okay. It's still listed as inheritable. Uh, so we have Quick here. I mean, it's a different alliance, and it might be okay. Uh, she's only sixteen years old, but honestly, I wouldn't mind bringing Quick into our our line somewhere. Our play, our son is only eighteen, so honestly, sixteen, eighteen sounds pretty acceptable so we'll go ahead and send this one as well a couple of potential alliances along the way and then we have some situations we can say we can you can declare war on earl down here right that's him yep uh family members can get married your half brother your half brother and your player heir we already set the player heir one we just need to unpause for that to take into effect we'll come back to that here in a minute i think looks like we can hire a court physician if we wanted to uh, I'm assuming physician is learning. It does look like that is the case. This is our bishop. Sure, why not? Does that change him from being a bishop again anymore? I mean, he kind of likes us a little bit, so we'll go with that. Uh, also, I think what we want to do is we want to go over here and check out our where is our realm. And go look at our vassal. We want to kind of help him, kind of encourage him to like us more. Sway is one of the uh, schemes that we can do based on our intrigue. Um, this is kind of a, I don't know, I would say maybe a neutral scheme. Not necessarily one that's going to be like, uh, there's very minimal uh, repercussions here. Um, we have a 45% chance of his increase of increasing his opinion by 25. So, it's like a 40% chance actually is what this is saying. Oh, this is the overall success chance. 45% overall success chance. 40% uh, per chance per year for two years. And I don't think there's any negatives, honestly, other than just time that it takes. So we might as well start scheming to see if we can do that. And honestly, we might also send him a gift to... Oh, we don't have the money. Never mind. Good to know. Uh, here is our cancel. Uh, looks like our steward is a little bit kind of not super great, to be honest. Uh, but we don't have anybody currently in the realm that would be any better. So we probably will not 
mess with that at the moment. Our spy master here does not like us. That is a scary proposition <laughs> for your spy master not to like you. Um, it's our aunt too. So that's just great. Um, We consider some money that will make her temporarily like us, but not that much, to be honest. We'll have to come back to that. I think we definitely need to deal with that situation because that's scary, but we will come back to that at some point. Um, other than that, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pause for just a tick or two. See if we can get the marriages to come through. Did it happen? Did I not hit the yes button? I thought I did. Oh, it's take. that's right. The, the tutorial says that it takes time. And uh, this time... The, sorry, the tutorial says it takes time and it makes it go instantaneously. Obviously, as part of the regular game, it actually takes time for that letter to go back and forth. So there's our scheme right there. Um, was that our spouse? Or, yeah, so this is our spouse for our son. So he's married currently. That's good. We need some grandchildren. Continue our line. So there's the other one. Uh, yep, so we've got our own spouse as well. Good stuff. It's always possible we could have some more children, which is fine. We shall see. All right, so that's everything there. We do still have um, well, this update here in a second. Wedding celebration. Uh, I think we're gonna take the prestige. I mean, don't get me wrong, money's good, but prestige is also very good. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. I think we will go ahead and start the war here because that's again something that the tutorial suggested and might as well start with a smart decision here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here. We're going to right click on you. We're going to declare war. Uh, we're going to seize the whole county there, please. And thank you. We definitely have more troops than he does. So this should be a pretty easy war. We'll go ahead and raise our armies. Give it a tick or two for our armies to populate. Did they completely materialize or are we still waiting on some? I thought I said we had 2000. Maybe that was just army strength. Or do we still have some coming in? Let's see, 50, 400. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, so we have 12 knights, 776 levies, 400 foot. Okay, so yeah, this is all we got. Um, is it possible that we didn't get this guy's levies by any chance? Or is that something we could do? I don't know. Let's go ahead and uh, grab our armies. We should still be able to win this. Double his numbers, basically. All right, so here's our battle screen here. Six knights to his five. It's looking mostly okay. All right, and then we're going to begin our siege here. So the siege, obviously, just like any other Paradox game, you know, you got these little ticks going on. Uh, we just got a wall breach, so um, that's pretty good, actually. Uh, that should give us a little bit of a boost, I believe. We're up to 1.8. Now, this guy's going to keep coming up here and attacking us. As his, water, as his army gets smaller and smaller, we should be able to handle it effectively here. Although, of course, our army's going to get smaller and smaller as well due to attrition. Another victory. Back to the war, or back to the siege here. It's a large breach. I think the large breach must just be a, is it just a boost up here or something? It's not a, a modifier or anything like that. Oh, some desertion, good stuff. Our knight was, oh no, our knight was maimed. Is that our half brother, I think? All right, looks like we're actually going to wipe him out. Oh, I thought we were going to wipe him out completely at the time. Valuable hostage is captured. Then we can do something with him uh, later on. Supplies running low, so a little bit of increase of siege projects progress. It will finish here in about 24 days, though. Oh, we're already at 100%, huh? Oh, well, then we can enforce our demands. We don't have to finish this. He becomes our vessel. Gain some fame, gain some uh, prestige. 
save ourselves a little bit of attrition and not even bother finishing that off. Cool. All right, so our armies can now disband. And we've got our enemy captured here. Um, the son and heir. That's, so it's his, his son and heir. Okay. So what if we were to... Can we ransom you off? What if we talk to you? Can we ransom something here? Oh, maybe it's under the moor, maybe? No. Maybe he'll come to us in a minute. We'll let that go for now. Maybe he'll still come to us and want to uh, get him for ransom. Uh, so scheme's still going on. We do have the victory here. Good stuff. These are all our victory tiles. And then we've got Powerful Vassal expects a council position. Okay, so that's our new guy, right? The guy we just got? Yep. What is he good at, if anything? Uh, he's really good at intrigue. He hates our guts, so that might not be a good idea. Uh, we could technically put him in learning, but that doesn't feel super great either, considering our current learner guy is really good. He's definitely better at the intrigue. We would really need to make him like us better, though. I mean, we will burn off some of the declared war over the next couple years. And if we give him a seat on the council, that'll burn off 40 there as well. Can we afford to... Can't afford to send him a gift... Can I release his son and make him happy that way? Feels like a really bad idea to put this guy on our as our main spy guy. Support schemes. I haven't clicked any of these buttons yet. You know what? I think we're just going to do it. Why not? We're going to appoint him. Um, how do we do that? Probably just here. Give it to him. What's the worst that can happen? We die. <laughs> we might as well. Um, so she gets unhappy with us. Hopefully she's not too good at her job. Hopefully this guy's just better at his job than she is. And actually he's only minus seven right now. So that's not the worst. Um... And again, some of that will burn off because of the declared war thing. So should be okay. Some of it is also short reign. So some of that will also potentially burn off at some point as well. We'll see. Uh, any of these buttons we want to push? Fabricate claim on county. Religious relations. We've got increased development in county. Collect taxes. Efficient taxation, increased control, increased control. Slow construction, loss of opinion, loss of control. Domestic affairs, foreign affairs. Oh, there we go. There's the ransom. Could also just do for a favor. Apparently for the favor, they don't really like it. Because he, he'll not like it because I'll have a, a favor in for him. You know, we'll just take the 10 the gold. Why not? All right. Well, that's so far so good. Now we got to turn our attention against what we want to do next. Um, we do have some options of like building some stuff in here. I know that's one of the things they had us do in the Tortola as well was to come in here and I think the castle. No, it's the Maybe it was just a building that was already there and we don't have it in here that's not the tutorial because it was here in this town or this area, right? I don't know. It's not cattle. Um, I think I think it was something that we just had that I don't see here. So we can strike new holdings. Like, how much does some of this stuff cost? I mean, what are we talking here? I mean, obviously some decent money, right? 150, 100 gold, things like that. Something that we might want to look into at some point, but probably something that we need to wait until... We've got our finances in a really good place before we go down that road. Yeah, some of these upgrades even are going to be not cheap. Ransom's accepted. 
going to go up to at least speed four for these in-between bits here. Excuse me, I had to sneeze again. <laughs> um, domains, so we have two of five holdings. So we can hold three more things. So we have these two right here, obviously. We can, we can definitely go after some more. Um, it might not be a bad idea to start just take advantage of our military strength and just knock out some of these other small, you know, counties here. Uh, for example, this guy right here. I mean, does he, are we able to see if he's got any alliances anywhere? Uh, where would that show up at? Um, this is this house, so that's not what I'm looking for. No claim on this title. So I think that's something we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and start getting some claim on a new title. So let's go ahead and go back to our council here. And we're going to have you fabricate a claim on... Doesn't really matter here which one we go for. They all seem to be the same. So let's we'll come over here and we'll just fabricate a claim. Where's the whole county? I think it might be this whole county, right? Because all of this is the county level. The fact that the names are different just throw me off, I think. So it's called an earldom. Earldom. Yeah, county in. So this is a county in. No, these are all individual counties. Okay, so that's fine. Well, we'll work on that and see what that does for us. Anything else we wanted to click on? I mean, I like both the collect taxes as well as the uh, increased development. Development growth. What is development growth? So here's our development right here. Is it currently growing? Development growth two of a 100. So it's not really growing that much, but perhaps if we start increasing development, we can get it to grow more. And it says in a county, so I'm assuming we can just start over here. I'm assuming it's gonna do this whole thing, right? Monthly growth plus 1.3. We'll try that. I don't know. Seems like a decent idea. Domestic affairs. Uh, we got foreign affairs and domestic affairs. Increases. So we can increase some vassal opinions of us. Which of our vassals is the one that we are most worried about right now? Honestly, this guy over here in Ormond. So let's go ahead and send some domestic affairs over here to Ormond. Perhaps that will... Did that work? Did I do it right? It is assigned to domestic affairs. I wish it does not show up here. Am I missing an icon here that tells me what it's doing? I feel like I missed something here. It's probably staring me right in the face, but I'm not seeing an icon that's telling me what what he's actually doing. I see this icon. I see this icon. I don't see the one over here. Hmm. We'll let it play out. We'll see what that does. Uh, anything I want to do with this guy, the marshal? County corruption. Do we have any county corruption? Where would we see that? Culture control. Probably under the money situation. Where would money go? Be um, probably something related to taxes. No, I don't see that. Is it only for our own counties? Maybe. Got supply limit. Probably blind as a bad. Okay, so here we go. If we go to this. There's our taxes. I mean, I'm not seeing any corruption right now. Maybe it exists and I'm just not, I'm blind to it. I'm blind to corruption. Um, so we're going to let it run for now. Maybe it's just something that will tick up at some point. Uh, what else we got? Train commanders. Night effectiveness, minute arms damage and toughness. 
9.5% chance of improving or finding a new commander or knight each month. That sounds pretty good. Organize army. I don't know. Let's just do some knight stuff. Does that work? So it says, oh, it's just a, it doesn't actually get assigned somewhere. Maybe that's what I missed. Maybe this doesn't actually get clicked on something. It just happens. And then finally, can we have you to support schemes? It says hostile. I don't think this is a hostile scheme, right? Uh, well, I guess the best we can do is we can just click on it and say support schemes and see if it changes that. It still says 47%. All right, well, it's been 30 minutes. Uh, we're going to put a cut in there. Um, I know there's a lot of, like, early stuff. Usually any Paradox game you play, there's a lot of early stuff. In fact, you probably don't usually get very far in the first episode, at least historically. People that I watch on YouTube don't typically get very far in their first episodes. Sometimes they don't even unpause. Uh, we've at least unpaused. But uh, we'll start, once we get the flow of things, we'll start, you know, kind of going at a little bit faster speed through some of the in-between bits. Uh, but we'll go from there. But I do appreciate you guys watching. May God bless you. And I hope you join me again next time. Thank you and goodbye. I wanted to give a special shout out to the following channel members. Thank you so much for supporting the channel.